It's working. Yes, we are live and we are going straight to YouTube. We are back this week again for another episode of the Bright Girls in Business podcast. And this week, I'm super excited. Y'all see this glam diva over here just looking like she want to look. I, look, I got to call her out. Cause she's she like really glad now, just a little something for the people, you know. Yes, yes, I'm loving it. Yes, Hold on, let me. And, and we are going straight to YouTube. Let me mute my. It's working. Hold on, let me yes, mute my, there we go. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes my uh, YouTube will play in the background, and then I get feedback. Oh, but anyway, we're here. here. We're live, and I have my illustrious guest Miss Candace Washington here today and um, I'm just excited to have her here because she has been very instrumental in helping me grow my business and so I wanted to bring her to the masses to the people to the bright girls out here so she can you know put a little razzle to the dazzle for them too well, uh, yes yes so I met Miss Candace as uh, a part of a coaching program that I'm in with Miss Felicia Kelly, and um, she is just phenomenal. So she has a podcast of her own that she does called the Raggedy Business Report, where she calls these businesses out and look, it's real. It's a real thing. It's a whole <laughs> vibe, and I need y'all to get into it. And so, um, if your business is raggedy, you need to you need to holler at her. So. Without further ado, tell me, how did that even come about? How did the Raggedy Business Report become a thing? Really, it was on accident. Um, I was saying raggedy, raggedy, just raggedy is a term that I use just in my language, period, right? If something is raggedy, I, I'll just call it out and say it's raggedy. And so I kept using that and I kept using that. And one night I lied to you not, I was trying to go to sleep. And it's usually when I'm trying to go to sleep that the Holy Spirit starts speaking to me. And so I heard the Holy Spirit say, you need to do something with that raggedy. You need to do mm -hmm. something with it. And I was like, okay. So I took my phone out and I made a note so that I wouldn't forget when I went to sleep. And when I picked my phone up, Shauna, you know, Shauna, yeah. the connection guru, she had texted me and she said, Candace, raggedy something. You got to do something with that raggedy. And it was confirmation like, yeah, that's how it happened. So I was like, okay, Lord, I hear you. Uh, that was confirmation. And so the next day I was just like, okay, raggedy what? Rag you know, and then the raggedy business report just came to me. Um, trademark is pending. Um, <laughs> Because we play oh, games over here, okay? Um, and so it just came to me and I was like, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. And it has really caught on. Like, I'm just really surprised to the point that people reach out to me and say, hey, you know, I have this raggedy experience. I'd like to share it with you. How can I do that? So it really has just caught on and kind of developed a life of its own. People actually look forward to watching it. That's what trips me out. You know, as, as business owners, when we create stuff and it's well received and people like actually embrace it, yeah. it's, it like trips us out, right? So I'm just like, wow, like people actually put it on their calendars to make sure that they tune in. And I'm just like, okay, like this, all of this just was an accident to be honest. But I mean, it's, it's a fun time. It was an accident for you, but it was purposed by God. Well, amen. Hallelujah. It was. And I say that because when I first started going live, everybody knows when I started doing this, it was an accident. Like I was at work. I was still working my job. And I always was kind of hiding from the camera, never really wanted to come forward. And one day I was just bored. It was a Friday and I had done all my work and I was just standing at my desk and I just went live just out the blue. I had never gone live. I had nothing to really talk about nothing planned and then people like you said they started being like are you going to come back and say you know I'm like oh okay I, guess I get it I get I it little known okay. fact I don't like live I don't like nothing has to do with video I will take a picture for days but ask me to get in front of a camera and do stuff like this and go live I really wasn't interested still kind of not interested but I do it because I know that it's necessary to growing a business and operating a business in these days and honestly that was me about a year and a half ago Felicia was like uh you need to start going live and I was like why come 
And she was like, because you need to start going live. And so as with anything Felicia tells me to do, I do it. So that's how I started going live. Not necessarily, not with the Raggedy Business Report at that time, but just started going live so that, um, you know, I could be in front of people and I've gotten more comfortable with it over time. It's also helped me to be mindful of how I communicate, right? So the things that I wasn't aware that I was saying all the time and things of that nature, like it helped me to refine my communication a lot because I would go back and and watch every live that I did. And so it really has helped me become a better communicator. And so I'm grateful for it. So yeah, I, I come before the people with the Raggedy Business Report. Uh, now it's once a month, rolled it back to once a month, the second Tuesdays of every month, 2 p.m. Central Time. And it's a fun time. I really, I enjoy it. Uh, it. Unfortunately, there are so many businesses out here doing raggedy business that it gives me something to talk about all the time. So that's the mm-hmm. downside of it. But it still is a, an opportunity for me to give some tea, if you will, about some raggedy business practices, but also give entrepreneurs an opportunity to learn from other businesses mistakes and I always give lessons on things that you can do in your business to make sure that you're not doing raggedy business so you know it it serves dual purposes I love that because I'm gonna tell you when I watch it sometimes I'm like oh okay let me take a little note look I ain't gonna tell Candace I might have accidentally (laughs) did that but let me me just jot down a note over here real quick okay you need to look at that yeah Um, yeah what what would constitute a raggedy business, or if you want to give us like an example of something that, you know, that you've talked about, because sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we're out here and we're doing business. Most of us, especially, you know, people that show up like us, melanated women, we tend to uh, be the first in our family to start these businesses and stuff. And so we're just out here kind of winging it at first, right? Um, And we don't always know what's raggedy. Yeah. So, so give me an example of something that you experienced or, you know, might've talked about that you would say, you know, people could help somebody. So what I always say is having raggedy business practices does not necessarily make a business raggedy, right? But, and however, if you leave those raggedy business practices unchecked, it will turn your entire business raggedy, right? And so one of the things that I find more often than not, it raggedy business practices have to center around communication. Like people are not communicating with their clients and customers. And so whether it's a delay that, you know, the, the client or the customer needs to be aware of, whether it's operating hours of the company that the client or customer needs to be aware of, whatever it is, communication is usually a big reason behind raggedy business practices. And I tell people often, and I, I will continue to preach this, most people, not all people, but most people are reasonable people. And when you do not communicate, you take away their ability to be reasonable and to be understanding because then they don't know what's up. Like most people, they just wanna know what's up. Like, hey, what's going on? I placed the order, um, you know, it's, it's been a couple of weeks, what's up? And yeah. if you just tell people what's up, most of them will be like, okay, cool. Like they're not tripping. But it's when you don't communicate, then it's like, okay, what, what's going on? And that's usually, not always, but usually when the attitudes come in from your clients or customers because you've left them in the dark, they don't know what's going on. So a lot of times communication, effective communication, consistent communication, appropriate communication because sometimes I've had some business owners come at me sideways and it's like, look, bro, like this ain't what you want. Like you, I always tell people all the time as well, in these days, you need to make sure that all your written communication is screenshotable because people will screenshot something in a heartbeat, okay. put it on the internet. And Listen. so make, okay. So most of the time it has to do with communication. So I encourage everyone just, just communicate, overly communicate if you feel like you need to, because that is going to cut down a lot 
on misunderstandings, on attitudes, on people being unreasonable and all of those sorts of things that we as business owners don't want to have to deal with. I love that. So it's more so about the client or customer experience, it making is. sure that they're happy, making it sure is. that they're served, you know, that whole thing. I, when you were talking, it made me think about maybe about a month or so ago, um, and I cannot remember the name of the business. I don't even want to call the name of the business, but it was a big to do. It was a um, she she made journals or, or printed mm -hmm. journals or planners or something like that, mm -hmm. and that whole conversation ended up getting blown up and screenshot and like she was going off and then she did a live about it like talking about the customer <laughs> it was just like girl Raggedy. stop yeah stop right now like you need a pr team clearly so oh my god and and you're right you see that um but on the flip side on the flip side of that sometimes you said most people are reasonable Sometimes we get those unreasonable high touch, you know. Listen, people. listen, 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 listen. I am the client experience expert. I am all things client focused, customer focused, treat your people right, give them a bomb experience. I am all of that. But in however, just how businesses can be raggedy, clients can be raggedy too. So I do have to say that you are absolutely right. Sometimes you get those clients and customers that are just raggedy. And what we have to realize and, and understand as business owners is we have to be able to recognize when we're dealing with that kind of person, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it don't matter what you do. It don't matter how much you communicate. It don't matter what you say. It don't matter how, how much you bend over backwards. It doesn't matter there are some people it will never be enough right and so what i always encourage business owners to do if you have people like that or you begin working with people and they start to show you signs that they're going to be like that because they're usually always signs right oh yes then yeah. cut it cut it like i i will everybody can't be my client that's what we have to understand as business owners everybody is not your client there are some people that you just can't serve, whether it's because you don't offer what they need or whether it's because they're unreasonable and unruly people, right? Yeah. Like everybody can't come into this space. I'm not for everybody, period. I know that I am not everybody's cup of tea and everybody is not mine, right? So yes, we do have to recognize that there are clients and customers that are raggedy. And when we recognize that they are raggedy, they need to go. That's one thing I can say I appreciate about you. And I'm, I'm going to say what you told me. And it, it, it was just the simplest advice. I was having an issue with a client maybe about two months ago. Um, and like you said, you can see, you see the signs, you know, okay, they trying to game the system here. Um, and I remember bringing the question to you, like, what should I do? And you said, it's your business. Do what you want to do. And I was like, you know what? you're right. <laughs> like, you're absolutely right. I can't do whatever I want to do with this situation. And this is what uh -huh. we have to remember as business owners. And I know that a lot of us, I just left corporate in January, praise the Lord. So I am no longer in corporate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But there are a lot of us entrepreneurs and business owners that still do have jobs and, and that still are in corporate. And one thing we have to do when we are operating and running our businesses is shift from that employee mindset to the CEO mindset. Because in your business, you are the decision maker, right? You get to determine what happens and what doesn't, what clients you serve and which you don't. That, that's up to you. You don't have to seek approval from nobody. You don't need permission from nobody in your business to do what you feel you need to do for your business, right? So we have to make that shift when we are operating our businesses as CEOs to be able to say, you know what? The buck stops with me. Like, if I don't want to do this, I ain't got to do this. If I don't want to work with this person no more, I don't want to work with this person no more. If I don't want to take this client, I don't have to take this client, right? So it is, it's the simplest advice, but we have to remember to shift our mindsets from the employee mindset when we're at work to, okay, I'm the boss here. 
Yeah. What I say goes, right? You have to make decisions that are going to be the best for your business. Can't nobody tell you that. Like you, we, we get into coaching programs and all of that, and that's great. And they are needed. You know, I'm a, they are needed. But at the end of the day, whatever advice your coach gives you, it's up to you to determine whether or not you're going to implement it because it's your business, right? We can guide you. We can tell you what's, what works and what's successful, but it's up to you to make the decision what you're going to do because it's your company. And that, let me tell you, that thing freed my soul because now I'm like, you know what? I can do what I, I can do what I want to do. You sure can. And don't I'm need so nobody permission. People, okay, I will send you a refund. Like as soon as it start going left, I'm like, look, I because some people just are, you, like you say, everybody ain't for me. And I understand Period. that. Um and it just is what it is. And I find my peace in that. I left corporate so that I didn't have to do stuff that I didn't want to do. And I didn't have to be stressed out and bogged down and working with folks that get on my nerves. So why am I going to bring that same that part. energy to my business? So, that part. Yeah. So I want to talk about um, how to maximize revenue with you, because I think that you have a keen insight on that. Um, when it comes to not only just pricing, but also something that I admire about you is your, um, your eye for data. Everybody does not have that. I'll be honest, at first I didn't. And until you really like told me where to look and what to look at, I was like, oh snap, like I'm missing a whole big picture here. So you know, how do you tell people or, um, you know, what are some ways that people can look at their business just as it is and, you know, increase their revenue with the people that they already have as their clients? Yeah. So this you girl, you know, got me in my, you getting me in my zone now. Oh, okay. now that's what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me start here. And I know you've heard me give this statistic before, but what a lot of small business owners do not realize is that 80% of your future revenue is going to come from just 20% of your existing clients. So what that means is only 20% of the revenue that you're going to make in the future is going to come from somewhere outside of the clients you already have. That's a big deal. A lot of small businesses don't know that. Because all you hear in the online space is client attraction, new clients, you know, the shiny new, you know, all of that shiny new mm -hmm. object syndrome, whatever, right? That's all we hear. But if you knew better, you will be focusing on your client retention so that you could keep more of your clients for one, that's the first step of it, and then maximize the money that you're getting from your existing clients. Um, client maximization is getting those clients that you already have to spend more money with you. And so I, I'll use this as an example. Got my hair done last week. Now, I have been doing my color for everybody you can see it's purple. I've been doing my own color for about four years because I, uh, I had trust issues. Because the last time I went to a stylist to have my hair color purple, it came out burgundy and she didn't fix it. Oh. And so it was a pretty color, but it wasn't what I paid for, raggedy. So I have had trust issues. I've been doing my own color. So back in October of 2020, I had a photo shoot to do. So I was like, okay, I probably should get my hair done. Let me find a stylist. Find, found a stylist, really love her. She's close to home, really good at what she does. So I've been going to her since October. Well, just last week, I allowed her to do my color. Right. Mm. And so it came out wonderful. I'm like, bet you got it, sis. Like I, cause I was able to still work. I was able to allow her to operate in her expertise, which is hair and color while I continue to work from the salon and operate in my expertise. Mm. And so the story of the lesson here is I went once she retained me as a client because I've been going back to her consistently since October. And now she's earning more money from me because I've increased the service that I get from her, right? Uh, the color, it wasn't the same as when I go in and just get a wash and twist. Like it, it, it was a nice little penny. Um, 
but she maximized me as a client. She earned more from me as a client and she will continue to because when it's time to get my color redone, what you think I'm gonna do? Right. Sis, we need to schedule that appointment, right? And so there, a lot of business owners are missing out on the opportunity to earn more from their existing clients because they're so focused on new clients. Mm. And if you can't retain your clients, then the money that you're spending to get new clients, which is a form of client acquisition cost, how much it's costing you to get a new client. If you can't retain the, the clients that you get, the money that you're spending to get new clients is basically going right back out the door because you can't keep them. So you get them one time, one sale, one purchase, then they leave. So that money that you spent to get them in for that one time, one sale, one purchase has gone out the door with them, right? And so what a lot of businesses need to be doing is focusing on their data. And data is, um, it's a lot more than just revenue and expenses, right? It's a lot more than, uh, leads, right? It's a lot more than email open rates. It's a, it's a lot more than the online space will tell you it is. Data is things like your repeat purchase ratio, like your monthly recurring revenue, like your client lifetime value, like your NPS score. Data is all of those things that a lot of small businesses aren't tracking because online is telling you, oh, it's all about new clients. Nah, Online is also telling you that Dub Sato and uh, HoneyBook are the jam and they're good for what they're for. So they're good for what they're for, but they don't allow you to track the data that you need to successfully run your business and operate your business. And so when you're looking at how your company is operating, when you're looking at how much you're spending to get new clients, a lot of businesses don't even know how much it's costing them to bring in a new client, right? So because you're not tracking it. And they're not tracking it because they don't have a system to track it, right? And so when you're looking at things like that and trying to make decisions for your business, you're really walking blind because companies and corporations make decisions based on data. They mm -hmm. make data-driven decisions. They make strategies. They build strategies, make strategic plans based on what the data tells them for the next quarter, the next year, all of those things. That is how companies operate. They don't operate off their feelings. The CEO ain't sitting around saying, oh, well, I feel like last month was a good month. No, the CEO was looking at the data, looking yeah. at those reports and those dashboards saying, oh, okay, last month we were up 20% from the month prior. We were up 42% year over year. So that is so true. You're missing huge opportunities to be able to strategically operate and grow your company if you're not tracking data okay i love that i love it i love it i love it no you just broke that down like it it never has to ever be broke again um <laughs> and you're right i used to work in corporate and one of the things that i used to have to do every day i used to have to come in and do our um in our digital department i used to have to put together our dashboards and look at you know how things were performing and how much money, you know, we spent versus how much money we made on a particular uh, and promotion and all that I'm, other good stuff. I'm willing and, to bet Excel wasn't the the, plat, the system that you used. No, for it was not. And so that's where I was going with you next is to ask you, because you already got on me about Dove Sato. So I use Dove Sato for what it's used for. And that's fine. Yeah. But when you, when it comes to, because you said something about an MPS score, like what, it, first of all, tell me what that is. But then also tell us what's some software that we can employ in our businesses to get that type of data so we can make informed decisions. Yeah, so your NPS score really measures the loyalty of your clients to your business. So how likely are they to stay loyal to your company or to your brand? If you Google uh, NPS scores, every major corporation has an NPS score. Starbucks, um, Nike, Walmart, Best Buy, every corporation has an NPS score. And so it tells you the loyalty to your brand by your clients and your customers. And so definitely something you want to be tracking for some systems. Um, again, Dubsado and HoneyBook are fine for what they're for, like for contracts and all of that. That's great. They're fine for that. 
Um, but when it comes to data, they don't give you that. So some systems that you can look into, you really want to make sure that you are using an analytics platform. And so there are a lot of CRMs out there that have analytics features. A lot of times CRMs and analytics go together because if you think about it, a lot of your data, not all of it, but a lot of your data is tied to money right? So where is your money information housed? It's usually housed with your, your uh, contracts or your client information, right? How much is every, you know, client A's contract is worth 25,000 and client B, that's where the financials are usually housed with the client information. And so it makes sense that they go together. Some different options, you know, out there are Salesforce and Fresh Sales and, um, HubSpot and Zendesk and Zoho, although I had a raggedy experience with Zoho. Zoho. I, yeah, I love their platform. Uh, Zoho One like gives you everything. I loved it, but their service was raggedy. So I can't in good faith uh, recommend Zoho. Although I've heard of other people that have had great experiences. So I don't know, but my personal experience was a raggedy one. And I hate that because I really love their platform, but they're an option as well. So there are tons of options out there um, that have CRMs with strong analytics uh, platforms that are going to allow you to be able to create reports for different things. So that all you have to do is schedule a report to run every so often or just click a button to manually run a report however often you want to. And again, this is how companies and corporations move. Like we got to get out of this habit of just living in the online space and being cool with a hustle. Mm. I'm not building a hustle. I'm building a corporation, right? Say that again. So, Say that again. <laughs> I'm Say not again. building a hustle. I'm building a corporation. So if I want to build a corporation, I got to move like corporations move, right? And so that requires systems. And so one of the systems that is imperative and critical to the operation and sustainability and all of that of a company is analytics. You gotta know your numbers. You have to, because that's how you make wise and strategic decisions. That's how you identify what additional clients have uh, earning potential. If your client lifetime value is $19,000, that, if that's what the math tells you, your clients, uh, well, every client is worth to your company and you have a client that's only spent $8,000, then there's $11,000 on the table that you could likely be earning from that client, but you don't know this, you know, that again is client maximization, earning that additional money from a client, but you don't know this because you're not tracking it because you don't have a platform and Excel and Google Sheets ain't gonna cut it. Right. So that's wow. my spiel. This is so good. Like I'm, I'm soaking all of this up almost like I'm in a coaching session. So like, yeah, cause I don't, it don't be about, you know, in the coaching, it don't be about me. It be I, know. My job. I know. And so that's why I'm like, Oh, let me shift back to like podcast mode. Like, I'm sitting here, <laughs> almost want to take notes. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so if y'all are watching this, I hope y'all are taking notes because she is giving y'all the hottest piping, hottest tea that you are going to get on this topic because I don't hear anybody else really delving into this and talking about it like you do and that's why I had to had to have you um, on the show because like you said a lot of people are running their businesses by the seat of their pants um, and I'll be honest in saying that I have been one of those people and Candace has gotten me all the way together she's gonna ask me every before I get an answer out of her She's going to ask me if I turn I? every other rock. And I have to be able to be on point because I can't come back and be like, I and know. honestly, I think sometimes people get offended by that because they ask me questions. And before I give an answer, I'm asking questions like I need all the information, all the context. So I know how to how to answer you, how to guide you. Right. Um, again, that's me collecting data. Right. If you ask me a question, I need data. I need more information before I tell you X, Y, or Z. Right. And so it, it everything is data, and that's we've got to get out of the mindset in the in the online space in the social media business space of just operating these businesses like they're side hustles and operating these businesses um, just off of what we feel. Your business don't care about how you feel. 
right? Yeah. Your clients don't care about how you feel, right? That's true. And let me just throw this in there. Don't ever say to a client, well, I had so much going on and blah. They don't care. Don't. If I'm paying somebody for a service, I really don't care. I mean, I kind of do, right? Because I, I just love people. But from a business perspective, they don't care what you got going on. They don't care if you have to stay up until two or three o'clock in the morning to meet a deadline for them. They do not care. They don't want to hear about your, your issues and all of that. They want what they paid for. So complaining to clients and making excuses to clients is never a good look because look, like I don't really care. That ain't, that's not my problem. That's not my concern, right? I paid you for a service. That's what I want. I don't need the extra. So I love it. So I have a question. Did you, did you do data or like work in a data um, oriented space in corporate? Like how did you, how did this become a part of your world and your ecosystem and your so i've always been in client experience client retention sales all of that uh for about 14 years it was it was 14 years when i left corporate and everything that i did and every company that i worked for it was data driven um you know we we used salesforce we you know salesforce was the one that uh most of the companies i worked for used and so we're looking at numbers. We're looking at our close rate. We're looking at, you know, how much revenue we have in our pipeline. We're looking at all of those things and using that to make strategic decisions, to build strategy around which clients we're going to approach for additional business and how we're going to approach them. Like we're using all of that. And so, um, yeah, data and client experience, client retention has been, a pillar in my career. I've always, I was always successful in corporate because I take care of my people, right? I, client experience is, is me. I just care just in general in life about how people are treated, right? And so I always took that into every working relationship that I had. And my clients have always loved me because they know, okay, Candace is going to treat us right. She's going to take care of us. If we need something, she's going to get it. That has just always been my reputation throughout my career. And so I just, I honestly didn't even recognize I had it as a business or to be honest, until Felicia told me, you know, you got to, you could do something with that. And I'm like, really? And I'm, because again, let's talk about our gifts, right? The things that come natural to us, the things that come easy to us, yeah. we often overlook because it's, it's like, well, that's just what I do. Uh -huh. Like it ain't, it ain't difficult for me. That's just, that's just who I am. That's just what I do. Right. But when she pointed it out to me, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is a business. Okay. And so then I started building my business off of that. And what a lot of other small business owners don't realize, like this is, client experience is an industry. Like mm -hmm. it's a whole full-fledged industry. If you pay attention to major corporations, I took a flight, uh, I think it was late, late last year and I flew on Delta and video came up. Who was the person speaking? The chief client experience officer for mm -hmm. Delta. So this is not a, a new field. This is not a new phenomenon. Like major corporations have entire departments focused on client experience and they have senior level management focused on client experience. And so I'm bringing that into the small business space because there aren't a lot of people who do what I do. There are a lot of people now starting to talk about client experience. Um, so it's, it's becoming more popular. Um, but I'm the only person that I know who's been talking about it in this space for as long as I have. And it's not as simple as it seems. I think a lot of people downplay the client experience because they think, oh, well, I know how I want to be treated as a client or customer. Well, true, you do, but that doesn't mean you know how to translate that into your business, right? And so there is a skill around that. There is a strategy around that. And that's what people don't have. That's the missing piece. So all these people that you hear talking about client experience now and all of that, just, just vet them. That's all I'll say. Um, because it's, it's becoming the popular thing now. 
Yeah. Um, but just because they can talk about it doesn't mean that they know how to actually help you do it in your company to the point that it increases your retention and increases the amount of money that you're earning from your existing clients. I love that. Cause here's the thing. I am the um, attention getter, if you will, for my clients. I'm the person that, you know, make them look good. And then sometimes they get into, you know, they're working with me and I'm doing the whole social media and the marketing and the, you know, content and all of that other good stuff. And then they're like, this isn't working. And I'm like, okay, what isn't working? Because from my standpoint and my end and what I'm seeing in my analytics, when I'm pulling from social media, it is working. So what isn't working? And then when they go down a pipeline and they dig a little bit more, is something else, mm -hmm. you know, it, it may be something else where they're losing people. It may be, you know, that their website is raggedy. Okay. And people come there and they got to click six, seven, eight times to, <laughs> to get an answer to one yeah. simple question. And they like, okay, you know, I, I don't have time for this anymore. Um, or it could be just something as simple as the way that they answer the phone. Yeah. 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 It's simple. I tell people all the time, you don't go to Chick-fil-A because their chicken is the best. I'm sorry. It, yeah, it, okay, it's great. But they don't have that line around that building because their chicken is the absolute best because I've had some bomb chicken in my day. You go to Chick-fil-A because you know how you're going to get served every time you go. Every time, every time. And the client experience, what I need people to realize, it is everything from the moment a client or customer interacts with your brand, whether that's seeing a post on social media, whether that's visiting your website, whatever, from that first point of interaction onward, all of that is the client experience. And people think that, oh, I can drop the ball on something. Well, it depends on how long they've been experiencing you, right? Like if you've built a relationship and they've been experiencing you for a long time and a consistent basis, then, you know, human errors aren't going to be as detrimental. And we're all human. Like the client experience is critical to your business, but it doesn't mean that you have to be perfect or that people expect perfection from you. Remember, go back to communication like we talked in the very beginning. Um, but every point of interaction after that first point is the client experience. And so it has to be on point all the time. Yes, you can make mistakes. It's about how you handle the mistakes, you know, but it has to be on point, right? And so we can't get lazy, even with clients that have been with us for years, still can't get lazy on how we treat them. Still can't get lazy on the experience we provide to them because the goal is to keep them coming back and coming back, right? Um, it's, it's to not lose them because when you've got clients that are staying with you like that, they're sending you business guaranteed. They're yeah. sending you business. They're referring you to their friends and their family and other colleagues and so on and so forth. And so you want to make sure that that's the other part of client retention. You want to make sure that you you're keeping people coming back and that that experience is always where it needs to be. I love it. I love it. So before we wrap up, I, I really want to dig a little bit into you okay um and how you got to this place how did you you know what's your entrepreneurial journey what really inspired you to step out on your own um felicia kelly <laughs> <laughs> you can't be around felicia and not be uh, like for real like hey i i did not think i had a business like i told you earlier i really didn't like i was doing a direct sale i was in a direct sales company and when I first began working with Felicia, it was for debt payoff and, you know, to help me get my finances in better shape. That's what I initially started working with her for. And I was content to just keep doing like, I'm just going to build this, you know, build my business in this direct sales company. And, you know, Felicia is great about seeing things in you before you see them in yourself. Mm -hmm. And so when she had that conversation with me, you know, you got a business with this, right? And I was like, a business with what? She was like, you know, client retention and client experience, like this is a whole business. What she had me do, honestly, now I remember, she had me do a brain dump. She said, brain dump all the things that you're good at. And so I did that. 
And when we met and talked about it, she was like, all I see right here is like client and customer service and retention and, and all of that. And I was like, hmm, that's very true. And as I started thinking back over my career and what made me successful in my career, that's what it was because I take care of people. And I don't play no game. Like my clients know I don't play no games. Like I like to have fun. You see my personality and all that. But when it's time to work, it's time to work. I play no games with anybody about anything. When it's time to be about business, I'm about my business. Yeah. And so, you know, she was like, well, you have a business with this. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's how the process started. I don't think I ever desired to be an entrepreneur for real. Like it, it wasn't like, I knew I didn't want to stay in corporate for the, for my entire life. I knew that, but I didn't ever really desire to do what I'm doing. I, my desire was to work with that direct sales company and get it to retire me from corporate. I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, build that up. And that was going to be my vehicle to leaving corporate. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, God had other plans. So I, I just, like I just yield to the Lord when he tells me to do something. Uh, and when Felicia, t Felicia Keller tells me to do something, I yield to her too. <laughs> Let me tell you, you, that's a, that's a, that's really a testimony because you flow so effortlessly in this space that the fact that you just told me, like, I never really wanted to do this. And I was like thinking about something else. I like, I can't even envision you doing something else. And now that I know you at yeah. this, you know, at this yeah. place. And so that's just a testament that you're in the right place doing the right Thank thing you. and that your gift is making room for you for real. It is. It it's yeah. funny because Felicia told me last last year, maybe around August, she was like, Your job is in the way. Mm. And I was like, Well, she prophesied to me. It was I don't know if she really I don't know if she really thought it was a prophecy, but like she kind of said it in passing early last year. You're going to be gone from that job by the end of the year. And she just said it in passing. And I was like, and I heard it, but I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then later in the year, she told me your job is in the way. Mm. And I, I understood, I thought, but it wasn't until I left the job and now I'm able to fully operate in my purpose and gift every single day. I was like, now I see what she meant by my job was in the way. Yeah, it, it, it really was. And I yeah. would not have been able to understand that the way I understand it now, had I not left corporate in January. Um, and now I can look back and say, yeah, it was in the way. It really I had was, an experience was similar to that. My um, friend slash business partner slash mentor, <laughs> um, she told me almost the same thing. She was like, you're going to have to quit your job. I mean, it was just random. She's like, you're going to have to quit your job. And I was like, it's like, where you, where you get off <laughs> telling me I need to quit my job? Like, and, and she, you know, she already was a millionaire. She had money, you know, she was doing her thing. So I'm like, what you mean? I have to quit my job. She's like, in order for you to really take your business seriously and go far, you're going to have to quit your business. You can't be doing, you can't have one foot in and one foot out, blah, blah, blah. And she just kind of like went up me one side and down the other. And I'll be honest, I was a little offended. She knows it. And she laughs now, but I was kind of like, what? She was like, pick a horse and ride it, Chanel. <laughs> and I could laugh now. But when I once I did cut the cord and like I got out here in this space, it was like, oh, snap. Like, like you yeah. said, it's like that light came on. Like yeah. th that job was tethering me from yes. something a lot yes. bigger. And yes. so um, I, I, I love that. And I, yeah. I don't always encourage people to just leave their job, especially yeah, no. the way that you I did. Yeah. You got, I mean, I, I literally just, I just said, okay, but I had no plan. I, had, yeah. I just jumped out the plane and I said, if I got a parachute in this backpack, it better deploy now. Like, yeah. that was, <laughs> that you, was you like, definitely have to use wisdom and pray about it um, because, you know, I, mine happened at the right time. And, you know, I was in a good position to do that um, because Felicia also brought me on to work full time with Cyrus and co as well. And so it just, it just worked out. But one thing I want to encourage people um, don't think it's going to be easier than okay. a job, because when I tell you I work more now, 
Oh yes. Than I did on any job oh, yeah. I have ever had. But the difference is I love it. Okay. Like I get up I every day you. and I just look forward to it. Oh. Like I'm just stress free. I mean, every it's fun. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. But it ain't no punk. It's not. Like, it, it's really not. This morning I woke up. Normally Sunday is my day of rest, and everybody knows like I'm laying on my couch. I'm not, I don't even really go outside on Sundays uh-huh. anymore. Like I just I'm on the couch. I'm watching TV and I'm resting. Like for real. Don't email me nothing. But yesterday, um, I had to pack up everything in the Airbnb um, and move and all that. So I didn't get my day of rest. Mm-hmm. This morning, I woke up ready to punch somebody. I was like, I've been working cut. It's like constantly nonstop. I'm so tired. But at the same time, it's, it is refreshing and it's different yeah. because you know that you're doing something for yeah. your future and everything that you do, it counts for you. And it's not building somebody else's legacy, giving somebody else's kids a trust fund. You know, it's like that gratification is real. It's Absolutely. So real. It really is. It's really real. Yes. So tell us, what are you currently working on or what should we look forward to from you? And how can people contact you and reach you if they want to work with you? Yes. So connect with me on Instagram and Facebook at I am Candice Washington. Candice with an I, -I C-A-N-D-I-C-E. If you type A-C-E, you ain't going to find me. So I am Candice Washington on Facebook and Instagram. The Raggedy Business Report is uh, the second Tuesday of every month at 2 p.m. Central Time. And if you'd like to reach out to me, uh, you can send me a DM on Facebook or Instagram. If you'd like to schedule a consultation, I invite you to do that as well. You can do that at IamCandiceWashington.com slash consult. You can, so everything is I am Candace Washington, okay? Just oh. try to make it real easy for the people. I am Candace she Washington. She's Candace yes. Washington, y'all. Y'all need yes. to know this name. Yeah, listen, listen. So, yes. um, but yeah, if you'd like to, you know, connect, shoot me a DM, schedule a consult at IamCandiceWashington.com slash consult. Um, love to talk to you about what you've got going on in your business and how my team and I may be able to help you and support you and get you on the right path. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much, you know, it's pretty much my, my thizzle. All right. All right. Well, I love it. Thank you so, so much. You you poured so much wisdom. I swear I should have been taking notes, but I got the video. Yes, you I do. Go back and watch yes, it. Yes, you do. And take all the notes that I want to because you just gave me some stuff that I need to. And you also got access to me outside of this. See, you, you're in a good position, child. Everybody can't say that. Everybody ain't able. Everybody ain't able. But let me tell you, <laughs> when she talked about coaching and getting people on, and she also dropped a little nugget there at the end. She said, me and my team. Yes. She, 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 she razzle dazzled that in there too. <laughs> um, but I'm going to tell y'all, I, I talk about it all the time on social media, but I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Coaching has been the game changer for me and, and so many other people for our businesses. You just have to get the right person, the right team, the right coach that really wants to see you win. And I guarantee you, Candace and Felicia, they let me tell you, they gonna get you right. <laughs> oh, y'all need to go over to I am Candace Washington and check her out and see what she has going on because I promise you she ain't gonna let your business be wrecked. Okay? At all, we don't <laughs> do that over here. And well, and I just want to co-sign as well. Coaching um, for anybody that's on the fence, like you said, find the right coach, uh, vet people, make sure you vet and do your research. But I would never have gotten to where I am had I not hired. Felicia Kelly. Yes. Now I, I'm blessed to be able to call her friend and sister and colleague and everything now, but that relationship started because I hired someone and everything that has come out of that decision, out of that obedience, because that was an obedience move for me from the Lord. That was me being obedient to an instruction that he gave me, but the coaching has changed my life. And so don't try to do it yourself out here. Don't try to go it alone because you're stressing yourself out. You're wasting time, mm-hmm. right? Coaching will cut time off of your progress yes, because you're is. leaning on the wisdom and expertise of that coach or those coaches. And so I encourage you, like, it, it's not cute to be out here hustling, trying to figure everything out. You are not an expert in everything. 
That's you do right. not know how to do everything. And that's why we hire people. That's, that's why we hire experts, right? That's why people come to us because we're experts in what we do, right? And so what you are not an expert in, what you need guidance in, you need to hire a coach for that. It will bless your life. Trust me. So, it will. That's all it I will. got. I just had to co-sign that because you, you laid that out there. I just, I had to hop yeah. on it with you for a minute. That's real. That's real. You know, don't be too prideful to seek yeah. out help. There's too many people There's out nothing here. wrong with saying you need help. That's a sign of strength. It is. We all need help. I ain't look. Chanel talked about me being, you know, one of her coaches, but listen, it, when I don't know, I ain't got no problem saying I don't know. I ain't got no problem saying I need help. I am not too big. I'm not too smart. None of that. If if Candace needs help, Candace asks for help. Sis will ask. Okay. So, you know, ain't none of us above any of it. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you again so much, Candace. I look, we definitely have to have you back because you know your energy and up, you know, we get together and we we kick it up anyway. Yes, I just have girl. a good time. I just have a good time with you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for spending your evening with me. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, I thank you for it. having me. And y'all know we'll be back here next week. We come back every Monday at six o'clock and we have a whole nother entrepreneur that we will be interviewing next week. Y'all got to come back to see who it is or check me out on Instagram and see who it is. I never tell y'all who it is because I want y'all to find out. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Yes, do it. Smack the bell so that you get the notifications and we'll be back.